Hey guys, it's Sean Klinger with Vital Max, and I'm with Mark from AEO Suspension. And today we are looking at Motion Instruments Data Acquisition Suspension System, basically. This is kind of a sneak preview of the system because uh, they've had something for mountain bikes for a while. And this is something that, that we've seen on all the pro uh, level teams as, you know, getting data from fork movement, from shock movement. These have been uh, very complicated. You basically needed to be a software engineer to understand all the stuff. But Motion Instruments system is basically, there is physical uh, fork and shock monitoring system, but that goes to your phone and there's an app and uh, it's way easier to use. Basically, Mark, you've used this for a little bit and tell me about your experience and, and what you guys uh, have found with it. Yeah, so so far it's been, uh, it's been very simple. Um, the mounting isn't, <clears throat> the mounting isn't too bad uh, to begin with, and once once you get it on the bike for the first time, it's no tools needed. It pops right on. The fact that I switched or, or really wanted to go with motion instruments, the main reason is you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to have a laptop hooked up to it. It goes straight to your phone. You can do remote testing this way. Yeah, it's, it's just really easy to use. So with remote testing is basically um, if someone has this in, say, Florida, you have a guy in Florida that has it, he can um, basically send you all the information. You can look at what's going on and tell him, hey, uh, change this, do this, or, or whatever. That's correct. So, yeah, with with it being able to, to send so quick to my phone, uh, we have guys potentially around the world. Um, we have one guy in Florida now. Um, that we could we can send test shocks or if they're having issues right when they end their session it's sent to my phone and I can be in my shop getting stuff done analyze the data real quick uh, give them a call or a text we can make adjustments so that that's what's been so awesome about it we're also structuring this into our daily program for our customers to where we can either go to the track with you with the data we can send you on your own with the data um, we can do full, full test days with the data. The options are really pretty open right now. We've, we've had it for about a month now, and uh, the amount of information that we pulled in one month is has really, I think, kind of changed the game, uh, especially for the the smaller tuner shops and uh, even the guys that, that are interested in, in making their bike better but not sure what direction to go. This, this really will eliminate a lot of questions. So I'm here with Chris Ebenar. The, the beauty of this is that it is it does a lot for you the graphs and the information you get just straight to your phone that we could see stuff um, and if I was here by myself I can make changes so right now we have it on our 2020 Honda Sierra 450 it's basically a, a fork sensor that that slides up and down and then something that goes on the shock and like he said that it's a little complicated, it could be, depending on the bike and uh, make and model, a little complicated to actually get it on the shock. Uh, fork's very simple, but once it's there, it's simple to uh, take on and off. So what did you find today that like you thought was pretty interesting about getting first-hand experience with data acquisition? Because it's the first time I, I've done it. You've done it in the past. Yeah, so I've had a lot of experience with data acquisition in the past, different types of motorcycles, different types of riding, and the coolest thing about that is being able, it goes beyond what you feel on the track, but more so it takes some of the, uh, the mystery or the guessing or even just your perception of what the suspension is doing, it takes that out of the equation. So for taking example, there is a section on the back of the track where uh, I come out of a corner, jump uh, I guess like it's a little tabletop you drive me into a corner and as soon as I'd get on the brakes the front end would start dancing around just hitting and skipping over all the braking bumps now normally that would say because it's the very initial point of braking I would think oh I should go softer um, now when we looked at the data and, and Mark had looked at the data she had noticed from the second that I had touched the brakes because I kind of land I do drive hard on the brake, but I get hard on the brakes right where the bumps start. That is blowing through the stroke, and I was actually just bouncing off the bottom of the stroke. So therefore, to go the opposite direction, don't go softer, go harder. And so we did that a couple times. One of the other very neat things is looking at spring rates. You know, so we have a spring rate for the bike, and the funny thing is that the spring rates are actually set for 
us, basically yeah. our ideal weight. Yeah. Uh, but from what Mark was saying, because of your riding style, you ride a bit more neutral to front, front bias. Yeah. You actually don't load the shock enough so you can go to a lighter shock. And I ride the rear a lot. So I would not to say would need a heavier shock, uh, but I definitely put a lot more force. So the shock is actually works better for me, even though it is the correct spring rate for the both of us. So that's something really neat with the data is you, it goes beyond just the, you weigh this much, here's your weight, but actually what is your riding style? How do you load the fork? How do you load the shock? Um, how do you get on the gas, everything to maybe go further into maybe what might be out of the norm for just a typical you know, setting? Yeah, I think um, that brings up a really good point is basically, I mean, when you talk about suspension and a dirt bike, it's, it's so, there's so many different layers because it's like, Oh, how fast are you going? Um, what is your your skill level? But then there's weird rider preferences. I mean, just like our different riding styles is I'm more on the front, he's more on the back, but you know, he's a little faster, I'm a little slower. It those things add layer upon layer of kind of complexity. So then when you're going to set clickers and stuff, you're like, which way do I go? Like what I'm you know, something with the fork makes the the rear end feel lighter or vice versa. So the, the really cool thing about looking at the data, um, it is really easy to, to see. Basically, you have two, two lines on a graph and it shows you like fork compression and shock compression. And if these things are, are completely divergent, that they're not parallel, they're not, your bike isn't compressing at the same rate, you know, front to rear, your balance is off. And that's, that's a really good starting point, especially if you have, know nothing about suspension, you don't know where to start at all. Um, I think this is a huge value for, for those guys. I mean, especially with a kind of a rental deal, like you can go out one day with AEO or if other shops do this, you rent the system, you look at the data and you make the, you see, oh, okay, that's what I feel here, you know, and then that translates to this in the data and I can make changes. Another cool thing about this system is that there's a little button on the handlebar and it drops a pin in um, the actual data and then so say there's a whoop section say there's a rhythm section say there's a certain you know s turn that the bike does something weird the back end swaps out or the front end fe feels really weird or harsh or whatever you hit the button to drop a pin at the beginning you go through the section you hit a button to to signal the end of that section and then you can take a, a closer look at that in the data in the graph um, later on when you get your phone when you're done to really see what's happening there. Overall, the, the beauty of the system is that it, it data doesn't lie, numbers don't lie, and it just makes things so much quicker to get your bike dialed in. If you have a bike that you're struggling to get it to turn, you're struggling to get it uh, to be stable, um, then instead of just, you know, I've heard other suspension guys tell me about bracketing, you, you go crazy far one way, and if you like it or you don't, and then you go crazy far the other way, and then you keep having to make changes over and over, and it, you're, you're kind of always chasing something with, you know, to see the data and to see the uh, the graphs, you you actually know what you're doing and where where your, uh, basically your wheels are and how fast they're moving. You know, I've, I've always tried to consciously be more of a front end steering guy, get my weight over the front a little bit more. Um, something today that I learned, I mean, it's intuitive you think about it, but I, like, if you are always over the front, the rear of your bike is light. So, like the data showed that I needed way faster rebound than what was on it and even uh, less compression so that because with uh, too much compression the back end is going to bounce around and move around and push around rather than um, get settled. Just a quick look at the data like they they looked at it in one second we're like yeah it's it's too stiff and, and too slow so we need to speed it up soften it up and uh, yeah it made a huge difference on the track it's not something I normally would make uh, as a change if I was out here by myself just messing with clickers. So overall, um, with motion instruments today, uh, getting getting our hands uh, a little dirty with this and, and playing with it, uh, I see the benefit. I think this is a super cool thing. Uh, again, um, the price isn't set yet, but it, it is a complicated system. Might not be something that people are gonna run out and buy. Uh, if you're a racer, I, I would say more data the better, um, but like REP AEO suspension that we worked with today, they uh, they will they've already planned to have a rental system. 
Um, they can come out or they can just give it to you and uh, you can play with it yourself. You know, other race teams, uh, there's other pro teams out there that have the system that are playing with it. Other suspension shops that are, you know, see the value and, um, you know, those might be doing a rental system as well. But uh, it's, it's pretty cool at, to see what you can do with one day of, of testing and this unit. So taking away your, your final thoughts on, because uh, you're a data guy, like was this, is this something that you think that you would ever want to buy? Or is this something that, you know, do a couple days? For me, yes. Um, I'm a guy like, if I go to a track, I'm fiddling with my suspension. I am adjusting my sag, I'm playing with fork heights. If I go to, Glen Helen, I'm going to adjust my bike different than when I go to State Fair, than when I go, say, to here. I'm constantly fiddling with my, my balance of the bike or the, the setup, the sag. You know. So for me, I would like it because it's something that can give you, again, that real world information coming back to you. If you are on YouTube, please check out Vilomex.com for more stories. And if you are on Vilomex.com, go to YouTube, hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.